Well, welcome back to Bill Fortney's photo vlog number six. Um, got a few more questions, and I'd like to address those for you. Um, appreciate the questions. Please keep sending them to Bill Fortney at earthlink.net. One of the questions that I got this time was from a Jay Henson. And Jay wanted to know if you buy a camera, and it comes with a normal 50 millimeter lens or maybe a 24 to 70 zoom, something like that, what should be the next lens that you buy? Well, a lot of that has to do with what you're going to shoot and what you need, but I've generally found through the years that, let's take just as an example, the widest lens that I have is a fisheye lens, an 8 millimeter, and the longest lens that I own is this zoom, which is a 150 to, 200, uh, 150 to 600 equivalent. So that's a long telephoto, and this is a very wide angle lens. I use these two lens less than all of my other lenses. And it seems the further you go towards a normal lens, a 50 millimeter, the more you use them, which means the stuff in the, say, 135 millimeter to 24 millimeter range are going to get a lot more use than the fish eyes and the long telephotos. Now, that's not to say you shouldn't own this lens or this lens. But if you buy it, you just know that you're going to use it less because it's a specialty lens. That's a specialty lens. Sports, wildlife, when you want to bring something that's far away, make a tight photograph of it. Most of the time, these three lenses right here, which is uh, the little trio of F2 lenses from Fujifilm, uh, this is the 35 F2 equivalent. It's a 23. This is the 50 millimeter equivalent. It's a 35. And this is the 75 millimeter equivalent, and it's a 50. Um, those three lenses will be enough for most of what I shoot. Now, occasionally I want something a little longer on this end, a little wider on this end. Uh, but honestly, I would say 80% of the stuff I shoot would easily fit in these lenses in the middle. So my thought would be start with lenses in the middle section of the focal length range and then work your way out as you have need for longer or shorter lenses. Um, I can tell you right now, if you buy a fisheye lens, you're not going to use it very much unless you do very specialized work. And you're going to use this lens less than some of the rest. But the stuff in the, let's say, between 200 and, four, and 24 millimeters, those are going to be the ones that you're going to use the most. So thanks for that question. Um, a question that I've gotten recently that I want to address is, is the new 50 millimeter lens, which is part of this three lens F2 package, is it sharp? Uh, there's not been a lot of tests about it because it's a new lens. It's just come out and not a whole lot of people are out there writing about it. I've had it for a while and have been using it and I can tell you it's an extremely sharp lens. I, I go to it a lot and I love the size of it. And it's a wonderful close-up lens. If you put a diopter, that's a close-up two-element filter. Uh, it has a 46 millimeter filter thread. So I would get a 46 millimeter to say 52 millimeter step-up ring. There's a number of people who make 52 millimeter diopters. And that or an automatic extension tube on the rear, either one of which will cause this to focus much closer and it'd be practically a micro lens. And I like it a lot, and, I've, and I have used it a lot for that purpose. Another question that I got was, is it safe to change lenses without turning your camera off? Way, way back in the beginning of digital photography, these are electronic cameras and have a lot of electronic stuff in them. There were some manufacturers that recommended to turn the camera off when removing a lens and then put a lens on before you turn it back on. I don't think that that's an issue anymore. I think it may be at one time there was some circuitry issues you had to be concerned about. But today, I think the biggest thing to be concerned about is when you take a lens off your camera, hold the camera body face down so that dust doesn't get in on the sensor. One of the things that you're going to find the more you use these, these cameras is if you get dust on the rear element of your lens, whenever you put that on the camera and you charge the sensor, make a photograph, it's electrified and it'll suck that dust off the back of the lens. Where does that dust come from? It comes from your rear lens cap. So from time to time, simply take a blower and blow out 
your rear lens caps and the rear of your lenses and that way there won't be dust on there that can get transferred to the sensor. How do you clean your sensor? That was another question that came in from uh, R. Coleman. Um, I don't recommend wet cleaning unless you have to. Generally, if you take a blower bulb and blow up into the camera with it held down like this, it'll dislodge the dust and it'll fall out. If you have to wet clean it, get a uh, care careful, uh, get a, a product made for that. Only put a drop or two of the solvent and then just wipe it back and forth a couple of times. It should evaporate and should get all of the stuff off. There is a product that a lot of people use, and I have used them, which is a stick that has a, a little um, adhesive square on the end. And what you can do with it is simply check and see where the dust is and just gently tap those and it will, the adhesive will pull the dust off. I, I'm a little uncomfortable with that, but I checked with Fuji um, and I know when I worked at Nikon years ago that they used similar products and they were fine with it. But anytime you touch the sensor, you just gotta be careful because if you destroy a sensor, that's the most expensive thing in this camera. Another question that I'd like to deal with is, um, do I use, and I was asked by, uh, this is P. Uh, Miller, P. Miller, wanted to know, do I use um, ultraviolet or skylight filters on the front of my lenses to protect the lens? I don't. Um, and the reason is, this is a very well-designed lens, and I want it to perform as well as possible. And if you put a piece of glass in front of this, it changes the formula. Even if it's a great filter, I'm just uncomfortable about adding glass to the filter formula or to the lens formula. And so I simply use lens shades and lens caps to try to protect the front of the lens. The only filters that I use very much are neutral density filters for long exposures or polarizers for the obvious effect of a polarizer to remove glare. Um, and I buy very high quality polarizers. Uh, so, you know, just be sure that if you're going to put something in front of the lens, it is a piece of glass that is not going to affect uh, the quality of what you've got. Um, I had another question uh, from M. Broad, broad, broadhead, sorry about that, M. Broadhead, wanted to know if I went out to travel and I was only going to take a camera and just a couple or three lenses, what would I take? And since we were talking about this earlier, this little system right here, the X-Pro2 with the three F2 lenses, uh, gives me a wide angle, um, a normal lens, and a slight telephoto, and with the ability to do the close-up work that we discussed. This is a real good little travel system. It's small, it's compact. You can go out shooting and put these in your pockets, in your jacket pocket, put this over your shoulder, and an awful lot of what you shoot in the field you can do with just this. Now, do I own a lot of other stuff? Absolutely, unfortunately. And I use those other lenses, but many times something that goes from moderate telephoto to moderate wide angle will cover a lot of what you want to do. Well, I hope that uh, that was helpful, and uh, I look forward to doing another vlog for you soon. Go out there and shoot some great photographs, and God bless.